From Television City in Hollywood, the Jack Benny Program. Guest Ronnie Byrne. <laughs> Presented by Lucky Strike, a light smoke. The best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Light up a light smoke, a lucky strike. The right smoke's a light smoke, a lucky strike. For the taste that you like, light up a light Light up a light smoke. A lucky strike. You'll say it's the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lucky Strike program. Well, here it is, April 6th, Easter Sunday. And I want to tell you the cutest thing happened this morning. When I woke up, Rochester, who incidentally is feeling a lot better, Rochester came into my room and he brought me a rabbit. He gave me a rabbit, a real live bunny rabbit. You know, and it was the cutest thing you've ever seen in your life. We were trying to figure out a name for it, and then I thought, oh, well, why bother? I mean, with the price of meat as high as it is. That would be beat me to that one. I mean, won't be along wrong with us very well. Long, I mean. You beat me to the joke anyway, which is very, very good, I think. But of course, today, Easter Sunday. Now, this is the day, of course, all over the country where they, the big thing is the Easter Parade, you see. And here in Hollywood, they held it on Wilshire Boulevard between Fairfax and La Brea, you see. And all of the, uh, the guests, you see, the, the uh, celebrities were dressed up in their Easter finery, you know, strolling up and down the street. And up ahead of the parade, leading the parade, was Phil Harris. That's right, Phil Harris walking. <laughs> now I know why they call it the Miracle Mile. <laughs> and of course, I wanted to be in the parade myself. You know, I bought a brand new suit to be in it, but it didn't get there in time, so I just stood on the curb and sort of watched it, you see. And it was a thrilling sight to see the women all dressed up in their beautiful new sack dresses. And just as the judges were about to pick the best dressed woman, the most embarrassing thing happened, a laundry bag fell off a truck and won first prize. A fire hydrant came in second. Lord, I could stand here and tell you about the parade all day, but I want to get on with the show. You know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you probably know, the younger generation has been taking over the recording business, you see. And many of the young famous singers are sons of famous fathers, like Gary Crosby and uh, Ricky Nelson. Well, the closest friend that I have in the world is George Burns, and uh, the friends are George Burns and Gracie Allen. You see? And their son has just made his first recording, and he's here with us today. I'd like to have you meet him, Ronnie Burns. <laughs> Ronnie, it's just wonderful having you on the show. Well, thank you very much, Uncle Jack. He always called me Uncle Jack. <laughs> Ever since he was a little kid, you know? Of course. I've known Ronnie's father and mother so many, oh, for such a long time, I'm practically part of the family. I go to their house four or five times a week, you know, and I go to all their parties. And Ronnie, I'll bet I had dinner at your house a thousand times. That's right. Well, to celebrate tonight, after the show, you come over and have dinner at my house. Oh, that'd be wonderful, Uncle Jack. Where do you live? <laughs> Where do I, 
I live in Beverly Hills. I know, but what's the address? Look, I invited you to dinner. If you're hungry enough, you'll find it. <laughs> I don't know, the younger generation hasn't got that pioneering spirit. <laughs> Ronnie, did your father ever tell you how he and I first met? Oh, sure, he told me that story many times. How he was a headliner and he went into his agent's office and you were sitting there in the waiting room in tattered clothes. And the agent said to him, isn't there something you can do for that poor fellow out there? Uh, and so my father went out and took the tin cup off your violin and gave you a small part in his act. <laughs> That's what your father told you. That's what he tells everybody. <laughs> well, look, at, regardless of what your father says, I will tell you the truth. I was the headliner at the Palace Theater, New York. And your father, George Byrne, was working across the street, right on the street, selling hot chestnuts. <laughs> My father was doing that? Yes. For 10 cents, he gave you six chestnuts and a chorus of ain't misbehavin'. <laughs> so feeling sorry for him, I bought him some shoes and gave him a part in my act. Well, that's awfully sweet of you, Uncle Jack. How'd the act go over? Well, the following week, we were both selling chestnuts. <laughs> now, Ronnie, who are you going to believe, your father or me? My mother. <laughs> Gracie? Mm -hmm. Mother told me the real story how Dad got started in show business. Yeah. You see, his first partner was a seal. The act was called Burns and Flipper. Oh, I remember that act, Flipper the Seal. Your dad worked with the seal. For right. three years. And then he finally teamed up with Mother because she ate less. <laughs> What became of the seal? Mother's wearing it. <laughs> well, look, Ronnie, we could probably stand here and reminisce all day, you know. But um, how about doing the song now that you recorded, your very first recording? Now, you right. go off stage and get ready, and I'll announce it. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Burns will now sing this first recording that he made called She's Kind of Cute. Thank you very, very much, Ronnie. And now I have a sketch, a play we're going to do that I'd like to introduce. Oh, but before I do, we must have our commercial. Oh, Don, Don Wilson, will you come out and do the commercial, please? You can do it yourself. <laughs> Don, Don Wilson, come out here.
you just say? I said you can do the commercial yourself. <laughs> Don, what's bothering you? I'll tell you what's bothering me. For months now, I've been trying to get you to give my son Harlow a featured spot on your show, and you continue to say no. But let George Burns ask you to put his son on the show, and you do it just like that. But, Don, George Burns is the best friend I have in the world. He's my pal. Some pal. I charge you less for being your announcer than, you, than George Burns charges you for being your friend. <laughs> heaven's sake, I pay him a few bucks a week to like me, and you make a big <laughs> Now, look, Don, you're going to do the commercial like you've been that settled then. I'm not going to do the commercial, and that is that. <laughs> now, look what you've done. I don't care. Look, Don, your business is to do the commercial, not with those big feet. Just do the commercial and do it. Oh, all right. A lucky strike is all cigarette. Every inch a cigarette. <laughs> Nothing but fine, light, mild, naturally good-tasting tobacco that's toasted to taste even better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. <laughs> Don't tell me. Tell them. I know. I've been with them 15 years. So when it's light-up time, light up a lucky. You'll say it's the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. There's your commercial. I hope you're satisfied. <laughs> well, there he goes, ladies and gentlemen. Twelve angry men. <laughs> about his son, Harlow. Oh, Mr. Benny. The minute I don't use him, Mr. I... Benny. Yes? You're wanted on the phone. Here? Yes, sir. Oh. Excuse me just a minute, will you please? Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. Rochester, what'd you call me for? I'm right in the middle of a show. Did you buy a suit from Clemmer and Johnson? Clemmer and Johnson? Yes, I bought a new suit. Well, a man brought to the house about an hour ago. Oh, oh, it's a good-looking suit, isn't it? Yeah, I hope it looks as good on you as it is on him. <laughs> Wait a minute. You mean he wore the suit over? He said for the price he paid, they couldn't afford to put it in the box. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Rochester, it's a beautiful suit no matter what I Oh, uh, just a moment, boss. There's someone at the door. Come in. Rochester. Uh, just a minute, boss. Is this the home of Jack Benny? Uh, yes, it is. Did he buy a suit last week? Yes, the man from the store delivered it. Oh, uh, that was Mr. Clemmer. Mr. Clemmer himself? Uh, yes, I'm Mr. Johnson with the extra pair of pants. <laughs> <laughs> the clothes and put them in the closet. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Has to call me right in the middle of a show. And now we've taken up so much time, I've got to get into the sketch. Oh, Don, Don Wilson, come out and introduce the sketch, please. Ronnie, where's Don? Don he Wilson. stormed out of here and went home. I sort of feel responsible. Oh, don't give it a thought. Imagine him getting so upset about his son, Harlow. I know, but I've liked Mr. Wilson for a long time, and, and well, I don't want him to hold a grudge against me. I wish you'd talk to him. Well, maybe you've got something there. I mean, if he was so angry that he left in the middle of the show and went home, maybe I ought to go over to his house and discuss yeah. it with him, huh? Yeah, sure. Come on, let's... Just can't 
can't get over it. After all these years, imagine he's doing a thing like that to me, taking another man's son. Oh, now, Don, will you stop pacing up and down? I feel the same way you do about it. But let's not let that mean old man spoil our home life. <laughs> After all the things I've done for Jack, when you remember when he had pneumonia, it was a pint of my blood that got him on his feet again. Yeah. I'll say he got him on his feet. You gave him the blood, he jumped out of bed, ran downtown, and sold it to the Red Cross for $10. <laughs> and on the way home, he stopped by our house and wanted two cents back on the bottle. <laughs> Think of how that man's insulted me. I oh, could now, just... Don, control yourself, dear. I can't control myself. No try. I am so mad, I scream! <laughs> now look what you've done. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, maybe we'll feel better after we have some dinner. <laughs> Harlow! Harlow, darling! Dinner's ready. Madame, remember, not a word about this in front of Harlow. You know how sensitive he is. Yeah. He knows if he's the center of conflict, he'll get all upset emotionally. Mm -hmm. Harlow, we're calling you. Yes, Daddy. Harlow, when we called you the first time, why didn't you answer? I didn't hear you. I was listening to this Ronnie Burns record. Ronnie Burns? Give me that. <laughs> Don't you ever let me hear you say that name around this house again. <laughs> Mother, what's the matter with Daddy, dear? <laughs> well, um, um, nothing. Uh, nothing, son. Now, look, Harlow, before we have our dinner, you must take your cod liver oil. Gee, Mother, every day you give me cod liver oil, I wish you'd stop. Why? Because my teacher says our classroom smells like the Malibu Pier. <laughs> well, you're going to keep on taking this cod liver oil because it was recommended by Dr. Dale and Dr. Iman. I don't remember them. <laughs> well, of course you don't. They were the two doctors who held you up by your feet when you were born. <laughs> yeah, now, open your mouth, dear. Come on. There you are. Oh, that's a good boy. Now, go wash your hands. Okay. Oh. Oh, honey, isn't he sweet? He certainly is. <laughs> oh, you know, it just breaks my heart to think that someday he'll grow up. <laughs> Oh, I'll get it, dear. Oh, it's you. The man who has the best friends money can buy. Uh, hey, Don, I know you're all upset about something, so I thought I'd come over and talk. May I come in? Well, oh, all right. Lois. I suppose Don told you what happened at the studio today. And We're I not just... going to talk about it before dinner. But you may sit down if you wish. Not there. <laughs> there. <laughs> Harlo, we're waiting for you. Coming, Mother. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Harlo, we'll talk with him after we've had our dinner. Yes, Mother. Don, get Harlow's chair. All right. Oh, Harlow, we're going to have the most wonderful dinner. I know I'm not supposed to uh, talk, you know, while you folks are going to eat, but why would you put this bulldozer in a high chair? <laughs> For sentimental reasons. This was Don's high chair when he was a baby. <laughs> now, dear, you just sit down and I'll serve the food. <laughs> There we 
Surprise, do you? Oh, gee, what a beautiful turkey. How much did it weigh, dear? 23 pounds. <laughs> it certainly looks delicious. Harlow, here is yours. <laughs> oh, smoke. Mother. And here are some nice mashed potatoes. <laughs> Thank you. Mother. Tomorrow, some of the kids are going roller skating. Can I go with them? Oh. Oh, Harlow, dear, I'm sorry, but I lent your roller skates to a man down the street. Well, what did he want them for? Maybe he wanted to move a house. <laughs> Don and Lois, look, at, I didn't come here just to sit and watch you eat. Now, I wanted to get something off my chest. I knew something was bothering you, so I'm trying to straighten it out. Now, look, at, I have nothing against Harlow. Believe me. Why is he mentioning my name? <laughs> now, Harlow, Harlow, calm down. Never mind. But he's mentioning my name. I'm in the middle of a conflict again, and I don't like it. Oh, no. I can't help it. I feel tension in this room. <laughs> now, Harlow, if you don't feel well, you just go up to your room and get ready for bed. Okay. <laughs> yes, sex <laughs> me. Now, Jack, if you came over here to apologize, do it and get it over with. Now, oh, wait a minute, Don. If you're talking about apologies, you owe me one. Imagine walking off a show in the middle of the show just because you were mad. You're darn right I was mad. Why, I just can't get over. You're not giving my son Harlow a chance. Why, we've treated you like one of our own family. We've had you over here to dinner hundreds of times. Oh, hold it just a minute, Don. All right, I'll admit I've been here for dinner hundreds of times, but I've always reciprocated. Oh, yes, he's right, dear. Many times he's taken us over to have dinner at George of Gracie's. <laughs> now, look at Don. Don, I know that you're upset about Harlow. And I'm willing to try to do something about Mother, it. Mother! Daddy! I'm ready for bed! Oh, fine, dear. <laughs> Come on out and kiss us goodnight. <laughs> I saw a bear last night on Bob Hope's program that looked like him. <laughs> Good night, Father. Good night, dear. Good night, Danny. Good night, son. Shall I kiss him, too? <laughs> I wouldn't let you kiss me if you were a French general. <laughs> well, good night, anyway. Now, wait a minute, Harry. Wait a minute, just a minute. Now, look, Don, I know how you feel about your son. You too, Lois. And if you feel that he has talent, and can do something, I'm willing to give him a chance, like I did Ronnie. Now, but I've got to know what he can do. Well, okay. Harlow, why don't you sing something for Mr. Benny? I don't know what to sing. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Don, why don't you do that number that you and Harlow do so well together? Okay, dear, okay. <laughs> now, Jack, I know this has been done before, but it shows off Harlow's talents very well. All right, all right, let me hear it. Okay, dear, will you give us an introduction? All right. Right over here, son. When skies are gray, dear, don't you forsake me, son. I love you so, sunny boy. When there are gray skies... What don't you mind in the least? I don't mind the gray sky. What will I do to them? You'll make them blue. What's my name? Sonny Boy. <laughs> what will friends do to you? Though my friends forsake me. What will you let them do? Let those friends forsake me. Who will you still have in the end? I'll still have you. What's my name? Sonny Boy. Where am 
I sent from? You're sent from heaven. Have I any special valuations? And I know your worth. And what did I make? You made a heaven. For who right where on what? <laughs> me right here on earth. God bless me. Oh. <laughs> when I'm old and gray, son. Want me to promise something? Promise you won't stray, son. Give me a good reason. I... <laughs> Just a moment, but first, a word about a light smoke, Lucky Strike. <laughs> Amigo, uh, ¿qué hora es? Ah, es tiempo para encienda un ligero, un Lucky Strike. Fumada ligera. Un Lucky Strike Para el sabor que usted quiere Encienda un Lucky Strike Sí, amigos When you smoke a Lucky You're smoking light You're smoking superbly light tobacco Naturally good tasting tobacco That's toasted to heighten the lightness To make the taste even better For the taste that you like Light up a Lucky Strike Light up a light smoke. A lucky strike. You'll say it's the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Thank you. Thank you. I wish I had time to bring everybody out here and thank them, Ronnie, son, everybody, but I haven't. I just want to say that uh, next Sunday, be sure and watch Bachelor Father, starring John Forsyth. I'll be back in two weeks with my own show, and I'll also be on the Shower of Stars a week from Thursday. Now, a very happy Easter, and be sure and buy Easter seals. Appearing on tonight's program were Lois Corbett, Dale White, Paul Power, and Seymour Rosen. Choreography by Jack Moore. Remember, one week from tonight on this same station, be sure and watch the new Bachelor Father show starring John Forsythe. And next Friday on most of these stations, watch the exciting new series about the Texas Rangers Crackdown, brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company. Remember, tobacco is our middle name. And here's a word for filter tip smokers. Are you a steady smoker? Then filter tip Territin is the cigarette for you. Mildness makes the difference. Because you don't smoke just one cigarette. You smoke pack after pack, day after day. And all the way, Territin's special kind of mildness is on your side. Mildness that comes from good tasting mild tobaccos. And a filter that really filters. Remember, smoke filter tip Territin, filter tip Territin. Mildness makes the difference. Jack Benny's next television program will be in two weeks. This is Don Wilson saying good night. Maurice Chevalier, Guy Lombardo, Betty Johnson, and the Johnson family and the Chicago Opera Ballet join Ed Sullivan next on the CBS Television Network. <laughs>